Rams fans, welcome in on this edition of Rams Showcase. The Rams notch their first dub of the year. Plus, last year's sweet pass rush duo meet this year's sweet pass rush duo. And later, on the road again, we preview Rams at Bears. Let's rock. This is Ram Showcase with your host, Sheriff Joe Bags. Yes, welcome in Ram Showcase. I am Sheriff Joe Bags at Sheriff Joe Bags everywhere at Ram Showcase everywhere and uh, RamShowcase.com. That sweet feature by Aaron Donald, by the way, uh, still sitting up there. Goodness, sake. and until eternity. All right, so be sure to check that out. Uh, it is, uh, of course, uh, coming after our first win of the year, hitting the road this time in Chicago. It was our first early kickoff of the year we all hate these i know i definitely do Uh, it's uh in my time zone these are 11 o'clock kickoff uh which actually isn't bad and i got really used to it in the st louis years but now dude i don't want to be getting ready and leaving so early all right and what am i supposed to do not drink beers during the rams game dude miss me with that all right so now i gotta be drinking at 11 (laughs) a.m i know i don't have to but I, I, I gotta do what I gotta do, <laughs> all right? Uh, lots to get into today, though, as uh, there is some Rams-related transactions going on. And then, uh, of course, we got the uh, Rams-Bears uh, preview. And uh, we also have an uh, interview this time around. Hopping back on, uh, we do have uh, Rishi Barron, uh, who's absolutely awesome. Great insight from the Bears' perspective. Uh, so we'll, of course, get to that in our game preview which is going to be in the uh, later half. Fan quesos as well, absolutely loaded with fan quesos. And if I do scratch yours, I do apologize. I just got to, you know, cut some stuff for time, potentially. Uh, But uh, speaking of time and potentially cutting stuff, let's go ahead and get into the business. Great dub from the Rams coming out of week three. The fight from this team was exactly what we were wanting to see, right? I was sitting here with you last week talking about, I just want to see some more passion. And I also kind of went into that game not feeling as down as everybody else. So, hey, welcome back, everybody who was just like throwing away the season after 0-2. Uh, it's good to be back uh, with you here. Um, and let's just kind of hang out all year. How does that sound? All right. How about we just wait until we know what's happening um, either way, though? But, yeah, the fight man out of this team, that was exactly what we needed to see, what we wanted to see. Uh, seeing some guys kind of come up clutch. Obviously, Kyron uh, just, you know, loading up the TDs out there. Uh, some really great plays by a lot of defenders as well. Uh, a lot of still like some some close calls on defense that we would like to see, you know, kind of get closer there. But ultimately, man, the uh, like coming back down from from 14 points down uh, against that team, I think was awesome. We showed a lot of really good stuff in that and uh, a good big place from a lot of a lot of different guys. Obviously, I said Kyron with his three TDs, two two with that late uh, that late uh, deep ball. That was absolutely awesome. X getting his uh, first career touch, and it happens to be a beaut. And uh, by the way, he is uh, locked in now. We've uh, McVeigh has told us he is our punt returner now. One was enough, man. You uh, got the job, all right. Uh, which is good news, especially because obviously the the worry was Kyron. Although I'll say this again, is that everybody was like, we can't have Kyron as our punt returner. What if he gets hurt? And then everybody else on the team gets hurt and then he's fine. So like, maybe it didn't matter. (laughs) All right. Uh, But either way, uh, Xavier Smith doing an awesome job on that punt return. A lot of big plays from a lot of guys. Troy Reader had that big uh, uh, stuff to run, which was absolutely awesome to see. So a lot of, a lot of good stuff in a lot of good places. All right. But a lot of my sentiments from last week were felt and uh, echoed in the team's play, which is, it's almost like they were listening to my podcast and were like, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. I highly doubt that. And if any Rams players are watching this, dude, say something to me, dude. (laughs) Uh, But I also doubt it. This is for the fans, all right? Uh, There's other podcasts, I think, for the the players, which is just other players' podcasts because everybody's got one. So everybody can, uh, everybody's got something. Uh, Rams have an incredible opportunity, though. Get back to 500. Uh, we're playing a team that is a winnable game in the Chicago Bears, although the early slot does give a little bit of pause in that because we know historically now, since the return to Los Angeles, those early kickoff windows, the Rams do tend to kind of feel a little sluggish in those ones. So hopefully that is not the case for this one. 
obviously would love to see that. But you come back uh, home after that, the Green Bay Packers game that I'll be at, by the way. If you're going to be out there, let's meet up. Uh, but uh, you come back to that game, 500. Packers is definitely a winnable game. Then you get in your bye week and then start getting healthy. Dude, I'm telling you, man, this is what I was kind of talking about last week is if you can just put together a few of these, we don't need them all. Just get healthy without it being too far gone. Don't let Puka and Cooper and Steve and Jonah and Darius all come back with just such an uphill battle that it's like, well, obviously that's so hard. And I like, what are we supposed to do there? You know what I mean? So obviously a lot of moving parts to that. But again, if we can just put together a few of these while we are beat up, then I think this team is going to be a okay and in position to do something very similar to what they did last year, which is turn it on late and then uh, carry that momentum into a playoff spot. Obviously, it didn't work out, but again, played a great football game against a great football team. So you got to take that. Uh, we lost to the by one point to the Detroit Lions, who gave the 49ers a Super Bowl spot. I think that the I really do feel like in that game, the, the Lions were kind of like, dude, we won. <laughs> and then it wasn't over. So that does tend to happen. Uh, but I will repeat what I have said before. We can just, um, if we can just string together those those few wins, man, then we'll be we'll be sitting good when this team does get healthy again. But I had mentioned it a little bit there, uh, and the fact of getting close but not quite getting home, and that does bring me into the sweet reports coming from the rookies here, as Braden Fisk and Jared Verse, one and two respectively, as far as quarterback pressures go, amongst rookies. They are getting so close, and you can feel their continuity pulling over from college, which is absolutely awesome. And sidebar here, real quick one, is uh, Braden Fisk was on the Rams Revealed this week, and I love that. The, the Rams Revealed is one of the best, you know, uh, best best contents. Is that a, is a thing? <laughs> uh, best thing that uh, the Rams put out on YouTube. I really believe that. The, the Rams Revealed is top tier. Uh, beh- besides, like, behind the grind and, like, you know, stuff like that. But the, as far as like a regular show, that's just going to be there every week. The Rams revealed is top tier and Braden Fisk actually kind of mentioned that he didn't go to USC. And one of the reasons was like, he's like, I don't want to be in LA, <laughs> which is hilarious. And uh, you got to watch it for yourself. Obviously it's incredible. Braden Fisk, absolutely awesome. And then last week did Jordan Whittington. I'm sure we'll see some really good ones as the, the year goes on. I expect to see like a cam curl in there i expect to see uh we'll probably get in there with uh with some young guys too like kinchins and and stuff like that and then hopefully we get uh, the guys that we know and love man i mean kobe was on there i think last year uh byron was there last year as well but i mean hey don't hurt to get uh, another another conversation there but it is like kind of it dives into their past itself really really cool that's all braden fisco this week and leads the nfl uh nfl rookies in quarterback pressures and again the sacks are not coming here, but uh, I guess I it, going back to the uh, Rams reveal here is that uh, he kind of mentioned that last year they had that that too, where they were getting close but not getting home, and he and Jared kind of was like like had a conversation like man we got to we got to get there we got to figure it out like we got to get to the quarterback and so they said it was about this time early season talking about it and stuff like that and it feels like that's kind of where we're at right now where they're going to be sitting there. In the meeting rooms right now, I fully expect guys like Giff Smith to be talking about like we are getting close. We're just you, you, uh, just to push a little bit more, and uh, we're going to be getting that getting to the quarterback in a great opportunity this week. As of course we're going against a rookie quarterback. A theme that I'll kind of be talking about a lot in this episode is that we are going against a rookie quarterback that has a rough offense, good defense, but a rough offense. But obviously. Uh, these young guys gonna get after it, have to get after it. I mean, ultimately, right? Uh, but the Rams defense has so many young and it, it, they're just not put together guys yet or groupings, I guess. I, I don't want to say that the guys aren't put together because each individual, I think, is playing really well. Uh, but uh, kind of just doing that cohesive team energy kind of thing is what we're really close on. And I feel like it's coming. And it, there's going to be, I feel, a game so at some point this year that kind of just flips that switch a little bit, just cranks that little notch a little bit and, and just kind of kind of uh, all comes together. And I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be against Chicago, Green Bay, or maybe after the bye week when we take on, you know, the the Raiders, the Vikings, the the Seahawks, and then the Dolphins, and then the Patriots. Like, I don't know which one of these games is going to happen, 
I also, my coworkers make fun of me for like having the schedule memorized. <laughs> it's like, well, I, I mean, after that, there's this, yeah, like, you know, um, but I'm sure some of you were like that as well, but, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's all good. Uh, I will say as far as, uh, the, the, the rookies go though, I mean, we've got Braden and, and, uh, and Jared and they're getting quite a lot of attention right now, but guess who's kicking a bunch of butt cheeks out here? Byron and Kobe, dude, last year's pass rush duo. They're absolutely killing it right now. So we get these guys, and let's also not forget that those guys are still second year. They're still learning the game as well. They're still kind of getting their feet wet into the NFL. Obviously, you're no longer a rookie, and each play is that uh, that 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 experience that you can build on. And obviously, they've they've been able to stack that up for the last year and three games. But again, it's a year and three games. You count playoff game, you get a four in there. But either way. Uh, still very, very young. And if we can get the Byron and Kobe combination to really just take off and be itself, and then also followed behind that, we got the Braden and Jared combo. We got two duos out here, dude. We got duo duos out here, dude. That's super sick, man. And so obviously quarterbacks uh, going to be getting the heat uh, over the next however many years we can keep these guys together. But either way, it feels like all four of these guys are hits and all four of these guys are could be sticking around for a long time, an extended period on this Rams roster. And that's our core, baby. That's the way it is, man. That's going to be so sick. And uh, I don't want to say, like, I, the reason I'm calling it the duo duo <laughs> is because I know there's people out there right now. I have not seen it. In fairness to everybody, I have not seen it yet. But that's four players who are pretty fearsome. And I have not seen anybody make any connections yet. And my warning to you would be, like, let's just... Yeah, they're sick, all right? But, like, legendary in the past and super sick right now. We don't need to make those comparisons, all right? We'll just leave it at that. Either way, though, I'm absolutely digging this. And I think that right now, in uh, the way, like, the state of the Rams right now, heading into week four, Chicago Bears game, uh, I think that we're kind of looking at this as, like, okay, really raw, but very talented. And I think that by the time we hit, like, 15, 16, 17, as far as the weeks go, because, like, who knows about 18? I don't even like a week 18, man. We see, like, Carson and Wentz play quarterback for us and stuff. But uh, either way, I, I think that we're going to be talking in those weeks about, like, oh, man, these four are crazy. You know what I mean? In, like, the good crazy, not like the we, the defendant, find the, you know, crazy, you know, anything like that. So it's crazy, which is going to be awesome. Good news for us as uh, Rams fans. Let's get into uh, transactions here real quick, um, and then we'll dive into our game preview. Heck yes. Pumped about this one, man. I, I, I feel fired up. I think part of it is because of the, um, the, the, the emotions felt by the Rams fan base this last, uh, this last week of people just being like, it's over. We're, we're, we're never going to be good again. We may never win another game. <laughs> and then, and then uh, beating up on the 49ers, which is absolutely awesome. Coming back on the 49ers. And uh, Joshua Cardi for president, dude? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, man. Uh, transactions. Uh, former Rams cornerback Tyler Hall signs with the Seahawks practice squad. So somebody we may see later this year. Former Rams safety Russ Yeast officially added to the Panthers active roster. Will now be in a unit with Jordan Fuller. Kareem Hunt signs with KC. What? What? Dude, am I the only one? All right, that's fine if I'm the only one. I just feel like that's nuts. <laughs> and then uh, Deswan Johnson was fined for a hip drop tackle against the Arizona Cardinals. I missed that one last week. I'm not sure if that was in by the time I started um, the show, uh, but either way, uh, Deswan uh, getting fined for that uh, hip drop tackle. Not sure when it happened. Even rewatching the game, I'm not sure when it happened. So um, they saw something. It was there. Uh, I'm not going to say, I'm not calling anybody a liar. I just don't remember seeing it. And then uh, some rumors for you. One quick rumor for you is Jimmy Garoppolo potentially to Miami. I don't think this is going to happen. Um, and in fairness, the article that was put out was from Sports Illustrated, which in a very sad turn of events, Sports Illustrated on a website version on a on an internet basis is one of just the biggest jokes of a publication in on in like covering sports right now. They do a lot of the clickbaity stuff and a lot of the, uh, like, literally, Jimmy Garoppolo to Miami. There is no evidence that this is a conversation at all. But Sports Illustrated thinks it up in their little Sports Illustrated brain and then puts it out as it's possible, or rumors. I've not seen anything. Maybe you have. And if you have, feel free to share it with me. Because at this time, 
as I'm saying these words to you right now, I have not seen anything legitimate to say that that is actually a possibility or any conversations are happening. And there's usually clues. Um, but when it's just a Sports Illustrated article, and unfortunately it's become this way with Sports Illustrated specifically, if I see that Sports Illustrated uh, has it wrote the article, I just assume that it's absolutely bogus, which is unfortunate, but that is kind of where we've come to now. Before we get into our game preview, got to mention today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. As of course, week four NFL season, man, it's back all the way until February. Hopefully the Rams are still playing all the way until then, but over a million fans across 33 states have gotten into the game last year, making their picks on Underdog. You can win up to a thousand times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite players' stats, which would be touchdowns, passing yards, um, receptions, even assisted, assisted tackles, you know, goes pretty deep. Absolutely love it. As far as the app goes, uh, extremely easy. I'm an old man when it comes to apps. I don't like learning new apps. I don't want new apps. I, don't want, I feel like we have too many apps. Uh, but the, the way that I, when I got into Underdog uh, Fantasy and started digging around on there, the search, my favorite search of all of these, of all of these apps, man, the, the search is absolutely incredible and definitely the only one I'm using now because of it. Super easy to find, super easy to use. It's all very user-friendly. Don't get intimidated by it. That's for sure. I still have yet to win, but again, I'm shooting for the stars, dude. All right, so I said I was going to stop doing that. Ah, uh, no, I'm, I got to go for it, dude. Go for broke, man. I got to go big. It could, I don't want to go home, so might as well go big, right? Um, but making picks on Underdog is straightforward, and signing up is even easier. Just head over to un Underdog's simple-to-use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo co code SHOWCASE, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That is Underdog Fantasy promo code SHOWCASE to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 or over, 21 over in Massachusetts, Arizona, 19 and over in Alabama and New England, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply, void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or you can text HOPE-NY. LA Rams at Chicago Bears this Sunday. Full game preview, that's next on Ram Showcase. Welcome back in Ram Showcase. I am Sheriff Joe Bags. The Los Angeles Rams heading up to the windy city of Chicago. Uh, Rams one and two, Bears one and two. Soldier Field. This might be the final time the Los Angeles Rams ever play at Soldier Field. We'll see what kind of happens with scheduling and all that stuff. Uh, but as far as regular rotations go, the Rams actually wouldn't, as far as the timing goes for a new stadium for Chicago. So this really could be the last time. We could potentially see a same place finisher situation where the Rams play the at NFC North opponent and then it happens to be Chicago. But honestly, chances not great on that, especially when you consider where these teams are sitting standings wise. Uh, so really could be looking at the final time that uh, the Rams see Soldier Field. 10 a.m. kickoff time, which is really cool. Adam Amin, Mark Sanchez and Christina Pink again on the on the call so uh third week in a row that we get this grouping 75 percent of our season has been called by adam amin mark sanchez and christina pink they know this team pretty well now i think uh rain early in the day uh really early in the day uh but high 60s for the game and a slight chance of rain late it doesn't look like that will stick but also who knows i'm looking at forecasts way ahead of time a lot of things change if you are a better for this game, Rams plus two and a half, plus 132 on the money line, over under 40 and a half, plus two and a half for the Rams. Dude, that's crazy. We're underdogs in this one, man. Um, I guess it kind of makes sense when you consider all the injuries and and uh, stuff like that and, and hit, hitting the road again. We've only had the one uh, home game. Uh, but I will say I expect that to change because I'll be honest, uh, you're going against a Bears team that's also one and two. Offense has not gotten rolling. In fairness, solid defense. But I would say a lot of money is probably going to come in on the Rams over the course of the week. So that number will probably probably dip down. And if uh, you are looking to hop in on that, I would do it early. Pants picks. 
So uh, this week, uh, the Rams will be in their white jerseys. Have yet to see the Royal this year. First time will be next week against the Green Bay Packers. Uh, but all of us going with the soul pants. I took the dub last week solo, so I am now tied for first place with Payo time. Rams house sitting in last. Uh, but uh, that cannot change this week as the standings will remain the same no matter what happens as uh, we all pick the uh, the white on soul combination uh, for this one. And also, I feel like the Rams know that I'm doing doing this segment now, and now they give us the the pants like uh, the the uniform combo way ahead of time. And they're kind of ruining this for me a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> but and also, then when you get the 24 hour notice, I don't even open that thing anymore. It's like. Yeah, I already know all this stuff. Like, one of the main things I would open that for was for the pants picks. And uh, now that we have that, it's like, oh, okay. I, you know, I've seen all this all week, man. <laughs> so it's all good. But hop in uh, as well. Uh, you can all always play in this game with us with our pants picks. And uh, drop your uh, predictions in the comments below. But again, Rams will be in the white jerseys for this game. Third road game in four weeks for the LA Rams. Only one home game so far that happened to be the dub, which is very cool. But 0-2 on the road so far. So trying to notch a uh, a dub in uh, that category here. Kind of what we're watching for in this one. Uh, The Rams defense feels like it's getting there, but does also feel like they are susceptible to giving up the big play at any moment. It feels like any snap could be a big play. But overall, I think this team is just playing kind of how I expected them to on the defensive side. They're playing a little bit um, inexperienced with each other, with a new defensive coordinator, with all new captains. So I do anticipate we played three games. we got to give it a few to to let them kind of gel. And I mean a few as in like eight, nine, 10, 11 games. I'm not saying like four, we're good now. Like I'm saying like look for week 11 or 12 to really be when this defense really starts gelling as a whole i do anticipate that the pass rush will start gelling before the entire unit but uh and that's something that we kind of saw last year as well uh, but i do anticipate that uh later on in this year we'll kind of be be like oh man i can't believe we were ranked 32nd in the nfl going into week four on defense that's crazy you know so obviously we'll we kind of the averages are kind of getting skewed a little bit too by arizona so uh it's something to think about as well the Bears offense, uh, not gone rolling yet, uh, and this is a perfect time for uh, for us to get it together. I guess in theory, technically a, a pretty good opportunity for them to get it together and get rolling on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, but for us on our side, uh, we're going against an offense that is susceptible, especially uh, up front. Uh, this team can get after uh, the pass or the, get after the quarterback on the pass rush. So something to watch for. And again, uh, rookie quarterback, Caleb Williams going into his fourth NFL game got a chance to get creative here and put some pressure on Caleb Williams which obviously is exactly what we want to do match up in this one let's take a peek at the Rams offense versus the Bears defense the Rams offense 17th in the league and the Bears defense a top 10 unit sitting number seven that is also where their ranking is against the pass the Rams top 10 in throwing the football as Matthew Stafford is um he's the hero man he's the guy as a uh, number nine in the pass game 29th and running the ball up uh, pretty good on our averages uh, from last week as uh, now sitting at 78. Uh, but going against the uh, 17th ranked pass or run defense for the Chicago Bears. 19 points getting put up uh, by the Rams and 19 points given given up by the Chicago Bears on average. So if the Rams score 19, all is <laughs> normal in the world. And uh, third down Rams, 22nd in the league. And uh, Chicago Bears only giving up a quarter. That's pretty awesome. Second ranked in the NFL. Uh, Rams uh, went after the run a lot last week, and Kyron had himself a day, dude. Scoring three touchdowns, absolutely awesome. Could be another big day for Kyron. I anticipate that he'll probably get some pretty heavy use up until the bye week at least, and when we get some of these uh, these receiving weapons back. And that's not just Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. I'm also talking about Tyler Higby. Went out in the uh, playoff game last year in Detroit uh, with that torn ACL. We haven't seen Blake yet like we expected. We've seen him here and there, uh, stuff like that. But I'm also starting to think now that that really could be because we want to see him later in the year, maybe trying to keep his legs fresh so that in the instance that uh, Kyron maybe is getting a little bit uh, 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 well used, we'll say, um, that uh, we do have some fresh legs in a very talented running back in Blake Corum. So I would say at this point, um, unless we do see uh, another injury, in some kind of setting that 
We'll probably see Blake a lot more later in the year, but he's also sitting at like RB3 right now because we're seeing Ronnie Rivers come in and not Blake. So that does tell us a little something. Maybe the coaches are trying to work with him a little bit about some stuff. Maybe it's pass blocking too. That we know that uh, for McVay and his offense, if you can't protect Matthew Stafford, especially like the third down situations, you're probably just not going to get the chance, you know? So he's got to see that in practice. And maybe, and and I'm just speculating here, that's pure speculation. Maybe that's why we haven't seen, um, seen Blake quite yet. Uh, another note here on the offense, uh, Matthew Stafford is a cold-blooded killer. That's my note. That's I wrote that. That's <laughs> uh, Depth of the Rams wide receiver room is showing itself, and it's really nice to see. Tutu coming in, um, uh, coming in big with that uh, deep ball. Uh, had some 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 scary catches early in the game. Obviously had the drop, and then that next one he got kind of double caught it, and it was like, dude, just catch the ball, man. <laughs> Getting all nervous and stuff. Uh, but D Rob coming in really clutch as well uh, with his moments. Whittington, I just feel like isn't getting really targeted enough, uh, but he has shown to be reliable when used. So uh, I I anticipate that kind of I feel like we'll kind of see his targets and receptions kind of creep up as the year goes on. He's not an explosive starter like Puka was last year, where in Seattle he just like went off for like 171 or something like that. I don't remember the exact number, but uh, it, we're not seeing that with Whittington. He seems to be a little bit more of a slow burn while Puka Nakua just came in like Kool-Aid man, just bursting through the wall onto the scene, man, which was absolutely awesome. Uh, Bears defense playing some really strong football, and uh, this could be quite the battle. This uh, the Rams offense versus Bears defense is the battle that I'm excited for in this matchup specifically. I think that's a really good, just like a, like a, a, a strength against strength, you know, and that's exactly what it is. Obviously, uh, we're dealing with our injuries uh, in the middle of the offensive line and then on the outside with our wide receivers. But we saw it last week. This team can definitely uh, put it together. Speaking of that interior offensive line, that's actually my best matchup of the week. I'm going to go with interior offensive line versus Andrew Billings and Gervin Dexter and Logan Bruss and Bo Limmer. They are playing well. Certainly have their hands full this week. These are talented players and a talented pass rush and front and total defense for the Chicago Bears. But Logan Bruss and Bo Limmer doing a good job, all right? I don't think that Bo Limmer is like, you know, pushing Steve out of the starting lineup or anything like that. We're asking him to do quite a bit as a sixth-round rookie center. Uh, and then Logan Bruss, obviously, we kind of, I, I, I don't know if we know or he knows or Sean knows or anybody knows exactly what who this guy actually is. If he's going to be a guy that we can kind of build up and eventually become a starter or if he's just going to be playing the role that he's playing now, just kind of a fill-in depth guy. I'm not really sure yet if anybody knows that, but these next few games could solidify that answer in either direction, in fairness. And uh, if uh, this happens to be a game where they look worse, and I'm talking about Bo Limmer and Logan Bruss, uh, I wouldn't take it as that they're terrible. Uh, this is a tough matchup for these two, and uh, they're being asked, asked to do a lot here. Um, I would anticipate where we'll see that situation where Mc, or uh, where we're in the shotgun and then uh, Kyron or whoever's at running back kind of comes up right into that a gap to kind of just fill that like we see that a lot with um uh, with our running backs especially in passing downs where we know that that the blitz coming there just hey go fill the gap dude just go now just go before we snap it just be there <laughs> you know uh, we see that a lot out of the Sean McVay offense your three to see on the offensive side of the football we're uh, going to start with Kyron Williams three TDs last week Absolutely awesome. Great timing for Kyron to get into a rhythm if that's what we are seeing right now. Because again, being out superstars and Puka and Koopa, then uh, we need to see, you know, the run game and the guys that we do have, the stars that we do have, because like, let's not, let's not mince it here, man. Uh, Kyron is a star. And so this is a great chance for him to just get it rolling. And especially against a Bears team, you're in Soldier Field. It's going to be like nice out and stuff like that, decent out, but um, still got to just Make sure that you can can run the football uh, this week for sure. Colby Parkinson, Parky, I think is that. Uh, do we do we do that? Do we call him Parky? I know that for sure. If he was a hockey player, that would be his nickname because everybody in hockey just uses like a little chunk of your name and then E at the end of it. That's just Landy is uh, uh you know and, and it just happens. If you're a hockey fan, that makes total perfect sense to you. But Parky maybe uh, is starting to find a little bit of a groove here. Uh, don't forget, though, that we still have Higgs coming back at some point. 
But Colby playing some uh, good ball right now, especially in the run game. He and Hunter Long are killing it in run blocking. And I think a lot of that has to do with being in the room and on the offense of guys like Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, who are not afraid to get in there and uh, get their hands dirty on some blocks and stuff. And we know that uh, Tyler Higby is that way as well. So if you want to be a, a receiving weapon on this team, you also got to gotta fill uh, or like create some space for your running backs as well, man. Because uh, it's, it's everybody helping everybody here. If that running back can get some, uh, some, some big carries, then uh, you might be more open in the next couple plays. So, and I think that that's kind of being communicated amongst the uh, Rams weapons. Speaking of Rams weapons, our final on the three to see. 2-2 two, two at well, the 2-2 two, two train, man, all aboard. I'm a converted 2-2 two, two supporter myself, and I will tell you that it is never too late. We kind of had this conversation on the live stream uh, this week that um, I, I sat here. I made a whole video titled LA Rams wide receiver 2-2 two, two at well is a bust. Now, in fairness, that was a different chair of Joe Bags, all right? I kind of feel terrible about that it, it whatever, all right? But now back here. I got his signed headshots in here. I got his jersey in my closet right now. And maybe that's an overcorrection. Maybe. But hey, I'm here to support my boys. All right. Tutu Atwell, though. Confidence feels like it is key for him as it feels like when he's playing, when he kind of gets rolling and gets some confidence going, some momentum going, he's just got more swag and he just plays with that, that, that swag. And so to have a game like that or a situation like that, where not only you're catching that deep ball, uh, to put the Rams in a great spot to pull off that game. But then um, you also get the fan base, the entire fan base being like, yo, 2-2, two, two, you know, going nuts for you and stuff like that. All social media all this week has been uh, very heavy on 2-2. Uh, on two, two. You got to love it, man. And so I, it, he does feel like a guy whose confidence does impact his play. And maybe I'm wrong there, um, but that's kind of just my perspective and what I'm seeing in him. Uh, but right now that should be that should be good, dude. Let's ride this wave, Doug. Let's do it, man. 2-2. Two, two. The 2-2 two, two train uh, leaving the station head to Chicago, man. If 2-2 two, two is running towards Chicago, it however fast he runs, I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's something there. There's something there. Slip over to the other side. We got the Bears offense versus the Rams defense. This is an interesting little battle here. 29th ranked offense out of the Chicago Bears going against the last ranked defense out of the LA Rams. Passing the football, the Bears and and uh, Caleb Williams are 25th in the league, and the Rams against the pass, 29th in the NFL. Running the football, uh, one of the teams that are worse than the Rams on the ground on offense, uh, 31st ranked for the Bears. 30th, though, uh, going against the Rams, are susceptible to giving up some uh, some big plays there. Points being scored, 17.7, 22nd in the league, and the Rams giving up over 30, dude. That's 31st in the league. Got to change that number for sure. And uh, third down, giving up Rams near the bottom in this regard. Uh, but the uh, Chicago Bears picking up a third of theirs. Some of the notes we're looking at here on the Rams defense. Uh, Rams rankings are low, but it does feel like something that will even out. And again, it feels like the Arizona Cardinals game is just kind of destroying our averages right now. So I think in the next few weeks, obviously, we got the Chicago Bears, not a great offense. The, uh, the Green Bay Packers. We'll have a solid offense and fully anticipate that Jordan Love will be back for that one. You get the bye week, then you get Raiders, Vikings, Seahawks. So there is an opportunity to kind of level out these these averages a little bit. Although, in fairness, Vikings are on fire. <laughs> Why, though, dude? What? <laughs> uh, but either way, uh, fun stuff. Uh, Rams, Rams young line and edge rushers, they feel like they're building up a little bit. A a like, am I wrong? Like, does it not feel like Verse, Fisk, Turner, and Young, that combo is just going to, like, become the sickest thing in the NFL, like, in a little bit? Like, doesn't it? it I, maybe I'm the crazy one here, all right? Very possible. Wouldn't put it past me, all right? But it does kind of feel like there's some kind of energy building with these four, where it kind of feels like the league has got to be a little bit aware of this, right? Like, other teams probably are doing a lot of inside conversations we're probably seeing some offensive line meeting rooms being like, yo, these guys are doing this. And then these guys are doing like, we're doing some really good things right now in the pass rush. Um, but it feels like, feels like it's turning that corner. And again, I will reiterate this. They are four guys and they are fearsome, but let's hang on. Okay. Until we start saying, saying things. <laughs> All right. The bears offense uh, has not gotten it going yet. Uh, great opportunity for this young team our young team 
uh, to, to do some damage uh, against the uh, Chicago Bears. And then uh, the Rams secondary doesn't feel like they've gotten any hardcore playmakers right now. There's nobody that I feel like is in the secondary that is like, this guy's locking it down. He's killing it. It's everybody else that's the problem. I don't feel like we have any of those guys right now. And maybe uh, my hopes were too high for Cam's, the Cam Curl and Cam Kinchins. Maybe I kind of had my expectations a little bit too high on them. Uh, but I also feel like the potential is there. We're seeing some things in certain plays where you're like, yeah, he can do this though, man. Like he can be that guy. We just got to see that become a, a regular, a regular part of it. Your best matchup in this one, probably, uh, maybe will disagree with me on this one. Uh, Troy Reader and Christian Roseboom against Caleb Williams. Green Dot Reader will be tasked with adjusting to a guy who is in his fourth NFL game. Rookie quarterback Caleb Williams, mad talented, all right, but he's in his fourth NFL game. Although we do have our uh, first year defensive coordinator, Chris Shula, and Troy Reader is the Green Dot. So I would call this decently even, all right, band name, uh, but. But overall, I do like that Troy Reader, he does have enough experience that I think that he will be able to get creative with that. So Caleb was really yet to have a strong game to really pop. And I don't know if, I, I didn't ask Rishi this, I probably should have, of like, is there, it has, have you had those moments of being like, oh no, this is the guy. Um, we've seen it already with Jaden Daniels of like, of moments where it's like, oh no, he's, he's it. Like he's, he's, the, he is that dude, you know? Um, but as far as, uh, as, as Caleb Williams goes, and in fairness, I have not watched super closely to Caleb Williams, um, will this week for sure, especially leading up to the end of the game. I kind of wanted to have a better idea of what we might be seeing here. Um, uh, but we'll see what happens, man. He has not yet had that big game. And this is a team that let Kyler Murray have a perfect game. So it's possible, I suppose. Three to see in uh, this matchup here. Rams defense versus the Bears offense. We're going to start with Jared Verse. Verse is showing the league that he is definitely going to be in the conversation for defensive rookie of the year all year long. And if you have not already put your money on it like I have, do it now, dude. We're going into week four and dude's kind of, in fairness, running away with it already. I think he was the first defensive player taken in this draft. Um, and I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm like 98% confident in that, but that uh, either way, if he's the top defender, then we kind of expect that anyway, that he would at least be in that conversation, but his play is, is killing it, man. And he's, he's showing, showing up big time. Uh, could be a nice game all by the way, too, to uh, start turning in those pressures into sex. Gotta, gotta turn that. I've talked about that at ad nauseum uh, on this show plenty of times of like, you got to turn your potential into production at some point. You can have all the potential in the world, but if it never turns into production, what's the point? And um, Verse feels like the guy who can definitely turn that into production and probably will within the next few weeks. Kobe Durant. I'm really looking for Kobe Durant to be a bit of a spark here in the Rams secondary. All right. This guy's got energy. The land shark. He's absolutely awesome. Uh, but we haven't seen anybody uh, again like that, that has just kind of shown out in the secondary. This is a great opportunity to do it. You you can probably bait him into a, a few bad throws, right? You would think so. Being a rookie, obviously, first overall pick. He's NFL ready. He's good to go. But he still is getting used to this league. So I'm looking for Kobe to kind of do some stuff. Um, nobody's really uh, popped. And Kobe's got the swag. All right. So I'm hoping that he's got one of those games where, um, where he kind of just, you know, turns it on a little bit more, you know? Uh, and then uh, we, cause we also saw like the, the dropped pick back in week one is like ever since then, it's been like, it's like, where, where's Kobe, man, where's the Kobe we know and love, man. So hopefully this week we uh, get that back. And then last Byron young, we are pumped for verse understandably, but agent zero is showing that he has definitely made the jump from year one to year two in a big way. And Young is certainly benefiting from that FSU duo, in fairness. But let's not forget that Young is quite sick himself at coming off the opposite edge of Verse. And uh, Young and Verse growing in this defense together for a few years just feels like at some point there's going to be some headlines talking about Byron Young and Jared Verse, this mean pass rush duo out of the LA Rams. Pretty sick stuff. We've got an interview here with uh, Rishi Barron. We'll get to that here in just a moment. But first, uh, some uh, connections here. Former Rams 
on the Chicago Bears. We have kicker Cairo Santos, short timer for the Rams, nothing crazy there. Tight end Gerald Everett. I've never been snubbed so hard on an autograph than from Gerald Everett. He uh, got to the person next to me and then looked up at me and was like, that was my last one, and then turned and walked away. I was heartbroken. I'm a grown man. I was heartbroken. <laughs> and uh, clearly, I'm still talking about it. Uh, offensive lineman Coleman Shelton, uh, one of my personal favorites uh, when he was a Ram. Uh, Daniel Hardy, absolutely awesome. He, again, short timer for the Rams, uh, but he was uh, with us for a bit. Uh, name you might remember, uh, wide receiver, Simba Webster. Simba, absolutely awesome, man. He's uh, the return guy. And uh, yeah, now uh, rocking it for the Bears. Secondary coach, Andre Curtis, and offensive game, offensive pass game coordinator, Thomas Brown. He was our uh, former running back coach when we had Todd Gurley. Former Bears on the Rams, uh, Sean Desai and Dave Tagoon. To Joan? Not sure, but two coaches, defensive assistants. Some connections here as far as uh, being on other NFL teams together. Demarcus Robinson played in Kansas City with Cairo Santos. Colby Parkinson played in Seattle with Gerald Everett. Daryl Taylor, Travis Homer, Jake Curran, and Andre Curtis. Oh, and Chad Morton and uh, Kerry Joseph as well. So uh, Colby Parkinson, definitely well-versed when it comes to those guys. John Johnson played in Cleveland with Andrew Billings and Stephen Carlson. Cam Curl played in Washington with wide receiver DeAndre Carter and defensive lineman Montez Sweat. And Sean McVay coached in Washington with Chris Morgan, who was an assistant offensive line coach at the time. And uh, Sean McVay, obviously, offensive coach as well. College connections. Rams running back coach Ron Gold was the running back coach uh, at Cal when Keenan Allen was there. So not in his grouping, but uh, they were there together. Kyron Williams played at Notre Dame with tight end Cole Komet. Quentin Lake played at UCLA with Carl Jones. Troy Reeder played at Penn State with Ryan Bates. Jalen McCullough, uh, undrafted rookie safety for the Rams, played at Tennessee with Velas Jones Jr., uh, Daryl Taylor, and Darnell Wright. A.J. Jackson played at Iowa with punter Tory Taylor. Probably not going to be a meeting on the field <laughs> for this one. Joe Noteboom played at TCU with Matt Pryor. Cam Kinchins played at Miami. Tyreek Stevenson. Uh, Tyler Johnson played at Minnesota with Terrell uh, Smith. Jordan Whittington played at Texas with Roshan Johnson, who we will probably see a good chunk of, and also wide receiver Colin Johnson. A couple of Johnsons out there uh, playing with Whittington in Texas. Puka Nakua played in Washington with... Uh, defensive back Kyler Gordon, who we could also see a good chunk of, and Roma Dunze. Rob Havenstein played at Wisco with Chris Beattie, who was a wide receiver coach. Uh, Logan Bruss played at Wisco with linebacker TJ Edwards and linebacker Jack Sanborn. And Cooper Cup played at Eastern Washington with Simba Webster, which honestly did not know that. <laughs> all right. Uh, should have, should have known that. All right. Because Simba played for us. And we should have known that. I, I probably did. Actually, I probably just forgot that. And uh, some milestones, nothing too crazy as far as milestones go this week as Matthew Stafford does need 223 passing yards to pass Eli Manning for 10th most in NFL history. He needs seven completions to pass Norm Van Brocklin for 7th most in franchise history. Yes, he is already one of the best Rams coaches in league or in team history. And he did reach 10th in league history in completed passes. He passed Eli Manning for that. This last week, need 223 to reach that passing yards, passing Eli, who is up for Hall of Fame. And uh, people still going to tell me that Matthew Stafford's not a Hall of Famer. Get that mess out of here, dude. And then uh, Kyron Williams, if he can score three touchdowns this week, like he did last week, he will pass Eric Dickerson for most touchdowns by a Ram in their first 15 starts. That would be wild. And I don't think he's going to be upset if he sits in second. That's just me. All right, we got an interview uh, before we get into our fan quesos here as Rishi Barron. I've known Rishi now for probably, I want to say about five, six years. And as far as like my world goes of being in media, being in sports media, an absolute legend of knowledge, man. Absolutely. I love digging into this guy's brain. And even like in this interview, we cut, like we talked for probably a good 20, 30 minutes before it even started, just kind of chatting, catching up and stuff like that. Uh, absolutely awesome. 
10 years rocking on TV. He's an instructor at Full Sail University, helped me become who I am today, and cannot thank him enough for that. And uh, he is also a Chicago Bears fan. Got to go check out the uh, Hall of Fame. He kind of talks about that as uh, Devin Hester getting in this year. Absolutely awesome. Uh, but incredible knowledge coming from a Bears fan and incredible perspective from the opponent. And we've got Rishi Barron as uh, we get ready for the uh, Rams and Bears. Right, we got a big old football game going on week four as the LA Rams getting the early kickoff window, something we all hate as uh, the uh, 10 o'clock a.m. kickoff time in Chicago. And to talk about this game, I've got Rishi Barron with me. Rishi, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. Thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure to chat with you, talk Rams football, and in this case, talk Bears football. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you taking some time, man. I see you got your jersey on. Who is that? It's you know it is Justin Fields, but um, nice. it's going to okay. get changed to Jalen Johnson because uh, I got to get a new nameplate for it. But uh, as you as you may imagine, I have uh, my share of uh, Bears quarterbacks uh, gone. I don't know if I would say <laughs> wrong, but gone to another team in my closet. So a little hesitant to buy the next jersey because of that. That's fair. You got a Cutler in there somewhere? I do not. I refuse to get Jalen. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> The, la the last two legit, the two legit ones I have is I have uh, Brian Urlacher and I've got Devin Hester in there. And I actually just went to Canton for the Hall of Fame ceremony and all that. And I got to see Devin. So uh, it was the first time I'd worn that one in a long time. So it felt good. That's right. Yeah, I got to go to the uh, to the hall on my birthday in July. So my first visit out there uh, it was absolutely awesome. They had all the stuff up already. So like Hester's jersey and all that was already out in that front room and stuff. Awesome. Super, super cool. Glad you got to do that, man. That's really cool. Being able to see a, a superstar like Hester getting in as a kicker to the Hall of Fame. That's some legendary stuff, man. I love that. Yeah, and a lot of his teammates from that time, and especially the special teamers were there too. So it was really cool. Like, uh, I don't know if you remember any of these guys, but like Johnny Knox, who was also yeah. a pretty good returner. He got injured early in his career and Jason McKee and, you know, Peanut Tillman, you know, who who could end up being a Hall of Famer. He's a, he's a finalist yeah. this year. He's not going to make it this year, but at some point he might be. He was he played a lot of special teams for him too. So it's cool to see Devin with all his special team guys and Dave Taub, who's with the Chiefs now. He he made sure he made an appearance too. So it was a special day for everybody. That is so cool. I absolutely love that. Well, going from the, the Hall of Famers from what we used to watch, and uh, I. I I wasn't going to say it, but that, that we had a Monday night football game years ago, Bears Rams. It was in St. Louis, <laughs> yeah. and Hester took two to the house on, and, yeah. ah, and we barely lost that game. So I blame Hester specifically for that one. But yeah, we had a lot of games like that when he was on the team where he single handedly won us the game. So it's, yeah. it is what it is, but it was a fun time to, to watch. And at that, that game, I was actually on a cruise ship that day. So I didn't see it live, but I, I was like, you know, checking on it. And I was like, he returned two kick. I think that was the first game he actually returned kickoffs because he was a punt returner before that. And they finally let him start to return kickoffs. And then he brought two back mm. on you. So sorry about that. The frustration I had of just like, stop kicking it there. Yeah, you? yeah right. <laughs> Right. And, and in today's kickoff rule, he probably already have like eight. So I don't know. But so. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so we do turn our attention, though, uh, to week four. The Rams coming in at one and two. The Chicago Bears still uh, looking for their first win. Could be happening this Sunday. We'll see what happens. Well, but... they have one, Joe. Don't take away their one. Oh, win okay. I'm they sorry. Won I'm their sorry, own sorry. sorry. Uh, you're right. You're right. I, I just. My 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 uh, Packers fan friend was uh, he got in my head earlier and he said some stuff about he's like oh they haven't even won and I even told him I corrected him so all right yeah you're absolutely well it didn't it, I will say it didn't feel like a win most of the game they were trailing most of it and they won without scoring an offensive touchdown so that's true you know, and it's a win but uh, it didn't it didn't yeah. feel like an overwhelming <laughs> great day so. Caleb Williams was bragging a lot, but he barely did much that game. I'm just saying, all right. But for this game, what are you expecting out of this game as far as like high flying? Are we expecting the defensive battle? Like what, what on your side are you uh, thinking we'll, we'll see on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I think defensive battle is what I would expect the most. You know, obviously, you you have some key injuries offensively. So, I, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it didn't didn't stop you from beating the 49ers. But yeah. at the same time, uh, defense has been our strength. Our defense has been outstanding all season long. Uh, all three games has played really well. A couple, you know, a couple plays here and there. But uh, I think before last game, they gave up 21 last game. But I think before that, they had like eight straight games. They'd held opponents to 20 points or less. So uh, our defense, our secondary 
is outstanding. And with you being down the receivers, you are, uh, that's a big deal. Uh, and at, on the other side of things, our offense hasn't seemed to, to get going so far this year. Uh, mm-hmm. big part of that has been up front. Uh, not a lot of time for Caleb to throw the first two games. The last game, it was a little bit better, but they just can't seem to find an identity. And the thing that I think has been most surprising is they haven't been able to run the football. I think most people thought the Bears would be able to run the football and help support their young yeah. quarterback early in the season. But through three games, the run game's been non-existent. All right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see because you know, the Rams with their young front are susceptible to giving up some, uh, some, some big plays on the ground. But I think that over the season, we're going to see those guys start to gel a little bit more. And hopefully this is yeah. a, a game we see that kind of come together. But is there anybody on the offensive side of the Bears that you may think that from the opposing perspective that Rams fans would just not be giving enough credit to somebody to, to keep our eyes on that we may not, might not be thinking about? I'll tell you someone who flashed a little bit in limited time last week was their running back, Roshan Johnson, number 23, wearing the Hester number, right? Um, he has looked the best out of the running back so far, and he he didn't really play the first two games. And they gave him some opportunities, and he made some plays. Now, DeAndre Swift, who is their big free agent signing at running back, has been non-existent. I mean, he's had a couple of you know screen passes that have gone for a little, but his yards per carry are something like 1.8 or something just terrible. Uh, so I don't know that the, the play calling has come into question by a lot of fans so far, but I think all fans are clamoring for more Roshan Johnson. He's a physical back. He was actually Bijan Robinson's backup in college at Texas. So he's a guy that keeps an eye on because I think he's going to get more playing time. I don't know if he'll get, you know, the lion's share of the carries, but he did show that he's capable of making some plays in the last game. So I'd say he, out of the people that maybe you don't know too much about, is somebody that you should keep your eye on. Is there anybody on the defensive side? I mean, everybody, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> our defense has been great. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one if you want one guy, Kyler Gordon. He's their nickel cornerback. He was their first draft pick the first uh, draft for our general manager, Ryan Poles. They didn't have a first round pick, so he went in the second round. And at the time, a lot of people were like, oh, come on, the Bears need a receiver for Justin Fields. And George Pickens was on the board, but they didn't go with him. They went with Gordon and Gordon is, he blitzes a lot from the nickel spot. Um, He's a really good tackler, as is our entire secondary. So He's good not only in the pass game, but the run game. And, you know, our cornerbacks are really good. Jalen Johnson is a guy that most teams don't try to throw on much. Gordon's really mm-hmm. good. So the guy that usually teams go try to make a play against this Tyreek Stevenson, who is the other outside corner. And he's kind of a, a big play guy, too. So if you throw the ball up there, he could be in trouble. But I'd say Gordon is the guy to keep your eye on in our secondary because he can he can make plays both in the run and the pass game. That corner blitzing will be something uh, we'll definitely keep our eyes on then because uh, that the Rams are susceptible to that, and hopefully Stafford can uh, can wiggle his way away from that if uh, if that does end up happening. Uh, on the other side, though, I guess like from the Rams, on the Rams side, uh, I know that the, I mean, the injuries kind of came in hot and heavy, right? but is there anybody on this Rams offense that – that it kind of worries you in this game, somebody that you feel like you, you have to contain if, uh, if the Bears are going to win this game? Yeah, I mean, I think Williams is the guy, right? Because he's 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 really your top name that's still left out there. And our run defense has been pretty good, but I think that that's, you know, I don't know, you can tell me more about it than I know, but on the path to victory that uh, if you guys are able to establish the run game, you know, with a crafty quarterback like Matthew Stafford, you know, guys like Tutu Atwell out there still he can throw to, um, you know, with the depletions you have at receiver, I think that the key for us is stopping the run. If we can stop the run, then I feel a lot better uh, about our pass defense. One thing that's been a surprise so far for us positively is the Bears have had a good pass rush. And I think that the two, the two Two areas of concern going into the season were defensive line probably first and offensive line because they have they're kind of unproven uh, at one of the you know inside defensive lineman positions and they really didn't have a second edge rusher but we've had between um, you know Green who we picked up from Seattle uh, in a trade he had two sacks the first game and then uh, with Demarcus Walker, who was kind of our starting defensive end last year, but he, he was just kind of, he's kind of moves inside sometimes. Uh, and then a rookie named Austin Booker, who's really explosive. They've had a, they've had a good pass rush. It's been one of the best in the league. So uh, I think that 
pass pass defense, I feel a lot better. Honestly, I feel really good about the defense as a whole, but I think if we can stop your running game, that'll open up a, a much easier path to victory. Yeah, no, I mean, you kind of mentioned it. Good pass rush and the, uh, the, the Rams with the injuries up front as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously getting guys back, A.J. Jackson now back at left tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jonah Jackson, that big offseason addition at left guard, he's down. So we've got uh, Logan Bruss. Uh, sitting in there and then rookie Bo Limmer is actually doing a pretty decent job at center so I I, I like it I mean we're asking him to do a lot as a sixth round rookie center but yeah that's a lot to ask. yeah well uh, and another guy I'll point out for you is a guy named Jervon Dexter um, he's basically our three technique and he was a second round pick last year guy with all the traits he's a former five-star high school football player and he's been really disruptive and in, in, in the preseason he was flash and he looked a lot better he didn't really do too much last season and he's been a problem for centers and guards this year so he's somebody that if he can apply some interior pressure might put some pressure on some of those linemen you're talking about yeah absolutely you kind of mentioned uh, the as you suffered in it being you know that that guy that can kind of do it I, we Rams fans feel a certain way about Matthew Stafford. We kind of hold him at this standard of just like, like we feel different about him. We've seen a lot of bad quarterbacks come through this team. Mm -hmm. So from just a different perspective, a, a, a fan who's not a Rams fan, where do you put Matthew Stafford in active quarterbacks as far as like maybe a ranking or just like, I don't know if you have a number or like maybe just a tier or something like that. Where do you place Matthew Stafford in today's NFL? I think he's still, you know, close to top 10. Like he might be a top 10 quarterback in the league still because he just knows how to play the game. And, you know, obviously we saw a lot of him when he was in Detroit. Honestly, we did, did have plenty of wins against him. So it wasn't, I don't know that we ever were like super fearful of Matthew Stafford, but part of that was because the team wasn't good. Right. So uh, even mm -hmm. when they had Calvin Johnson, like we had peanut Tillman up against Calvin Johnson and it was a, a pretty fair fight there. So uh, I still think, you know, I think there's a lot of quarterbacks in the league that are still kind of unproven right now, even guys who flashed and shown big plays. And with Matthew mm -hmm. Stafford, you always know what you're going to get. Uh, he knows how to play the game. You know, he, he knows with all those different side arm angle throws and all that. Uh, he's the kind of guy who I always know is going to show up for a game. I'm not expecting him to like conversely talking about your former quarterback, Jared Goff, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, whenever we play him, we know we're going to pick him off four times in the game because that's yeah. what usually happens. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't know that Stafford is a game changer at this point, but he's certainly a guy that, uh, you know, week in week out is going to be consistently good. All right, fair enough. I I feel like I can't name ten quarterbacks better than yeah. Matthew Stafford. I, I I agree with you. I'll be hard pressed to say five, but I mean, there's some talent out there. So it's also I try to keep my uh, my 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 royal and soul colored glasses here at, at bay a little bit when talking about uh, my boy Stafford. But yeah, if he's if he's not in the top ten, he's he's right there. Right, he's, he's got he's it. I mean, he's come on. He's, <laughs> Speaking of quarterbacks, though, your boys just brought in a, a new addition in Caleb Williams. We did. Highly doubted, obviously, out of college. But the conversation was obviously, do you go uh, Williams? Do you go Daniels? And Williams, not necessarily playing poorly. He's not ruining anything. But Daniels out in Washington, he's kind of lighting it up a little bit and turning some heads. Is there any kind of, you know, feeling in the Bears uh, fandom? I know we're only three games in, so yeah, it's, sure. it's so hard to assess already. But is there anything? It's like, oh, maybe we made the wrong call. Well, first of all, there was never a question for them. Um, I think they knew immediately when they got the number one pick who they were going with. I think if they had, they they did have the number one pick the year before. And had he been coming out, I think they would have gone with him then potentially. I don't know. I mean, they still had a, a, an allegiance to Justin Fields, but it was one of those things where it was like, if the right guy is there, we will we'll take the right guy. So to answer your question, no. But what I will say is that... <laughs> Bears fans have kind of lost their mind a little bit. You mentioned it's a long season. You got to remember he's still a rookie quarterback with yeah. all the all the accolades and all the hype and everything coming in with him. And it's funny because I and I include myself in this group. I think we were all really excited about this year, but didn't want to say it. And we all yeah. were saying, all right, we're going to temper our expectations. We've been burned before. We're not going to get crazy and think we're going to be better than we are. And in spite of that, and everybody, you know, most Bears fans, their predictions are somewhere between probably, you know, nine and eight or eight and nine and uh, 11 and what, how many games we play now? 11 and six. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I think I'd say the predictions have been pretty, I say standard. My prediction for the season is 10 and seven, which still seems, you know, pretty realistic. We'll see how, I mean, this game will probably determine a lot of if that could happen or not. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is that we kind of, once the game started, all of a sudden, even though we were trying to temper expectations, I think everybody kind of expected him to go out that first game and just rip it. And he didn't. Uh, and there were a number of reasons for that. He missed some throws. Again, mm -hmm. the play calling has been called into question. But the biggest thing is he didn't really have a lot of time to throw. So back to your conversation about Jaden Daniels, uh, I saw a bit of the game last night, and that guy had all kinds of time to throw. And credit him for the cool. throws he made. But Caleb just hasn't had that so far. I actually got a stat for you because I wanted to look this up because I, I, I figured we might have this kind of conversation. <laughs> Caleb Williams in week three, when he had a clean pocket, 29 for 43, 331 yards, 15 first downs, 2.31 average time to throw one touchdown. So when he's had time, he's been pretty good. Uh, even in that second game against Houston, he was ripping it in the first half when he had a little bit of time to throw. I tell you, I don't, I don't know how much you guys blitz. I know you got what, what, like four sacks this year, and you've had the, you know, some, some guys in and out, young guys up front playing. But mm -hmm. uh, if, if there ever, ever was a game to be blitz heavy, this is the game because that's what we've had problems with all year long, and that's what Houston did in week two, which crushed them. So uh, he's still learning how to play the blitz. The offensive line hasn't been great. When he's had time to throw, though, he's been good, and he started to hit some some throws downfield last game. He's he's kind of doubled his passing yardage every game, from the first game to the second game and the second game to the third game. So where does that put him against the Rams? Uh, I don't know if I'd expect he threw for 363 yards last week. I don't know if I'd expect that because a lot of that was kind of late in the game. But um, I, I think we're going to see more of that side of him than what we saw the first two games if he has time to throw. Fair enough. And yeah, the Rams uh, definitely mix it up pretty well as far as the uh, pass rush goes. Um, I don't know if you are staying up on uh, these rookies that the Rams have, but Braden Fisk and Jared mm -hmm. Verse are one and two Great in QB players. so far. So uh, their continuity coming over from college, you can already tell that it's yep. there still. The way that they're able to stunt with each other and stuff, it's uh, something exciting. They're getting close, but they're not getting home yet. And that's kind of what we're waiting on next is that's the next step. We're, we're right there. We're we just need to put it together and maybe this will be the week that that happens. But obviously it's going to, it's going to be a good one either way. Cause I mean, Caleb Williams coming in just with something to prove. I mean, like you said, he's got, he comes in with just this, the, the expectations are massive, but I also think that you're, like you said today, um, the bears fans expectations, you're trying to temper them, but like you bring in a Keenan Allen, you bring in a Dunze and, and Caleb Williams, you got a good defense. I think that if I was sitting in that situation as a fan, I would have come in with uh, some pretty high confidence as well. So I don't know. Maybe I think it's just well, well, you brought up the stunts. That's a good point to bring up because they've had a lot of trouble with that. Uh, and and nice. if there, if you if you look it up, if you want to you want to search uh, social media and find some stunts against the Bears, it's been it's been painful. The center oh. uh, has not been good. The the guard, one of the guards, has not been good. So they did make a change on the offensive line last week. It seemed to help a little bit. They they put in a different guard, uh, but. At the same time, yeah, it could be a get, get well game for for your pass rush up there mm -hmm. uh, if that's the case. But I will say I, I've been really impressed with how Williams has, uh, um, excuse me, Caleb Williams has handled kind of the ups and downs so far. He seems measured. My biggest concern about him was nothing to do with on the field. It was you hear all these stories off the field. People thought yeah. he had a you know an ego and all this stuff. That that mm -hmm. has been not at all the case since he's been in Chicago. He's been a team guy. He's been a good leader. He's been, you know, his body language on the sidelines sometimes hasn't been great, but other than that, um, I I've loved the way he's handled himself and he seems to be ready for adversity. He seems like the kind of guy who doesn't get too rattled with it. So I think if in nothing else, the first three weeks, he's learned a lot. I, will that translate against the Rams? I don't know. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if you get pressure on him, that's, that's the secret to, to coming away with a win on Sunday for you. Well, we'll see what the uh, the last year Chargers interim head coach, Giff Smith, uh, Rams defensive line coach, what he cooks up for this one. I'm sure he's uh, keeping an eye on all those numbers like you talked about for the stunts and stuff. Uh, but I got to get to to this one now, man. Uh, like, like we obviously, we we it's early in the season. We're beat up and young. You guys are young. What I, I, What's your score prediction? What do you think uh, happens in this one? So I know I said I thought it would be a low-scoring game, but this is what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you 
Bears 23, Rams 20. Um, now, I will say this. I was surprised to see the Rams are an underdog coming into this game, especially considering that you just beat the Niners. I understand the injury concerns, but I think that caught a lot of people off guard when they saw the line Bears fans. Bears fans didn't expect that they would be favored after mm -hmm. you got the win you got last week. And, uh, you know, and, and we're now one and two. So uh, but a lot of people are also saying, well, it seems too obvious to take the Rams. So this is one of those games, especially with, with what's happened in the NFL the first three weeks of the season. I don't know if I've ever seen anything this nuts with the way these games are going. So I'm going to give, I'm going to give the bears the win. Um, I think the difference in this game will be special teams because uh, we have a rookie punter who's been placing the ball really well. The guy who was at Iowa last year, Tory Taylor, they can control the, um, they can control the field position, maybe get a big return or two. Uh, I like where we sit defensively. I think we can probably cause a couple of turnovers. And uh, I do think this is a game where Caleb will have um, one of his better performances so far this season. I don't know if Keenan Allen's playing or not, but if he is, that could be a big boost because they haven't really had much of him the, the first three weeks. That's interesting you bring up special teams as a deciding factor. The Rams special team is uh, great this year, actually. Doing uh, doing awesome. Joshua Cardi, rookie kicker, hasn't missed a kick. Hit the game winner last week. Ethan yep. Evans is going to knock the ISS out of the sky one day. And, <laughs> and then uh, Xavier Smith, man, his first NFL touch was that punt return last week wow. against the 49ers. His first NFL touch and put the Rams in to, to win the game. So uh, he and he's already been locked in. McVay already said he's the partner. <laughs> That's it. He earned it on one. So I'll take it. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll see uh, if special teams really is the deciding factor. Ours is definitely young. That's I, I'll tell you who I miss. I think you told me at some point you kind of lost your luster for this guy, but I've missed Johnny Hecker. That guy was fun. He was a great punter and he always threw a good pass mm -hmm. on those fake. Punts, yeah, so. I love yeah, we got a fi we finally got a fake punt. The first fake punt we've done since Johnny left. We got it uh, last week against the Niners, and uh, it was a run though. It wasn't a throw. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ethan Evans is not throwing the rock. <laughs> well, all right, you said 23-20. Uh, in my head, I've been sitting 23-17 uh, with the Rams coming out on top. So we're kind of right in I line there. That. It, it, it definitely feels like this could go either direction with the way that this uh, early season is shaping up, but. Obviously, we got a lot of football to go, so this game will not make or break either of our seasons, and that is at least something good that we can take going into week five uh, after this one is done. Rishi, thank you so much for taking some time with me. Where can we uh, follow you? Well, it's pretty simple. It's my name, Rishi Barron, R-I-S-H-I-B-A-R-R-A-N. Uh, that's my my Twitter account, which is probably the best, best way, or X account, whatever you want to call it, um, probably the best <laughs> way to follow me, so... Perfect. All right. So, thank you so much again, man, for taking some time. And uh, yeah, we'll get into our fan quesos. That is uh, coming up next on Ram Showcase. Always awesome to catch up with Rishi. Always a good time, dude. Absolutely love chatting with him. Good stuff. And hopefully he's sad on Sunday. <laughs> you know, uh, let's get into our fan quesos. Those where you ask me Rams related questions and I give you my best possible answers, dude. Uh, so we have a ton this week and uh, some of them are just NFL related. And we're just going to skip over NFL generalized um, questions. I do like to try to keep these as, as Ram specific as I can. We're going to start over on the Facebook page with Brett. Says with Les Snead's history of making some big time trades, who is a player you would love the Rams to add before the deadline? Doesn't have to be realistic uh, looking trade, just a guy you'd like to see come over to the Rams. Great question, man. Um, I mean, obviously you got uh, some some really. I really like a. I want a sick tight end, like just the sickest tight end of all time. I like our tight ends, but I would really like that, and I hate how much I like George Kittle. I don't really publicize that as much because it's like a 49er and it's like, well, what's the point of being excited about a 49er? Um, but um, yeah, but obviously he's, he's incredible talent. Um, but I mean, I don't really think I would want Travis though. What does that sound, dude? I don't know what's happening right now. Either way, uh, we're just gonna keep rolling here, but oh man, it's a great question. I really probably should have thought about this a little bit more. 
Um, can I just say Ernest Jones? <laughs> is that does that not work? Is that one uh, uh, or like just a sweet safety man? I would have to think about it really um, on who I would want. But there's like a couple of players like if I could get Jalen Ramsey back, I would be I, obviously I'd be all over that. Um, probably be a secondary player, man, um, or like an inside linebacker, possibly. So should have read that ahead of time probably but uh yeah that's that's probably where i'd go with it man is probably like a sweet safety or something sorry i don't have a better answer for you there brett <laughs> uh let's see here let's head over to this page now uh brett's got a few here uh, this that was single T brett this brett's got a few t's uh will tredavious white get burned next game um maybe i don't know what do you want me to do with that question man what are you expecting me to answer out of that question man what did you want me to say all right you yeah this guy's a bum get him out of here i'm not going to do any of that all right we're here for the love of the rams uh next question will rose boom and reader learn to take better angles and get a tackle what do you want me to say to you dude what do you want from me here well are you trying to just get me to talk trash about the rams because that's not going to happen this is not the show for that there's other shows that have that um are rose boom and reader playing to their best abilities probably not all right but are they who we've got our best options? Yeah, probably. All right. So, I mean, I'm rooting for these guys. I hope I go into each week hoping that they're going to do it. If they don't, I mean, what, 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 what then what? <laughs> I just, I go to work on Monday still. I don't know, man. Uh, will our safeties cover? Uh, okay. I'm skipping your questions. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude here or anything, dude, but if your questions are going to be, um, like geared towards that, then we will uh, move on. Nick with the next string here with a rose boom and reader struggling. <laughs> uh, what is happening here uh why don't we see uh, omar spates oh solid question okay reasonable my my bad nick i jumped uh, i jumped on you there um i know he's a rookie but let's give him uh six to ten plays and see how he does yeah i'm absolutely with you there um but i will say also i feel very confident in this team and coaching staff that they would not put somebody out there if they didn't think that they would be the best option did that make sense what I'm trying to say here is if we are not seeing a player on the field, there's no way that Sean McVay is sitting in there being like, no, hold. Like, no, like we, we're not holding things back, dude. All right. The best players are out there. And if the, the team believes that Troy Reader and Christian Roseboom are the best options right now, who am I to say that it's like they're wrong? Because let's not forget also, Omar Spates did a great job in the preseason. He's an undrafted rookie linebacker, okay? And we don't know what coaches are, are seeing in practice. We don't know what's going on in these meeting rooms. Chances are an undrafted rookie, 32 teams didn't, didn't pass on him that many times and, and just were like, oh, what? He was available. What were we thinking out here, man? There was a reason, okay? And Troy Reader and Christian Roseboom, they've been in this defense for a while. They have a better understanding of the NFL. And I'm sure we'll see Omar at some point this year. I like Omar too. And I would love to see him out there and see what he's got. But if the coaches aren't pushing for it, there's no reason we should. Should 2-2 be the number one option uh, with Cup and Puka out? And should he pass up Robinson as the three when Puka and Cup come back? No, I think that's an overreaction. Um, I think that, I mean, he's, it's not like he's playing poorly. Had a great deep ball. Um, he had some, some really good early plays as well. Um, but no, he's not doing enough, in my opinion, to pass Tyler Johnson or Demarcus Robinson. So I would still say he's a five. Um, I don't think he's up there. And, and to be a one, um, I, I just don't think Tutu's got one in him, if that makes any sense. I, I think he's, I like Tutu. I've got no, I've got no Tutu hate at all. All right. All aboard the Tutu train. But he's not a one. Um, I, I would say at best he's a three, um, especially in our offense. But even when Puka and Cooper are back, I don't think he's doing enough or has done enough to pass up Johnson and Robinson. And maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let's see here. And next one we hear from Nick. Rank the Rams running backs in order. Dickerson, Falk, Jackson, Gurley, Kyron. That's the order. <laughs> Dickerson, Falk, Jackson, Gurley, Kyron. Uh, rank the... Oh, that's an NFL question. I am going to skip the NFL questions because I've got a lot to get through. And I don't want to burn all... I, I'm way over time already. So we're doing great. Uh, through three weeks, uh, Blake Corum's only carries were in garbage time against the Cardinals. Do you find it strange that Ronnie Rivers is ahead of him on the depth chart? Is this just McVay not trusting rookies? We see Kyron not play much as rookie year two. We see a lot of rookies not play that much. Uh, Puka, Jordan Fuller, um, 
some others probably are uh, like, I guess, Byron, Kobe, those a lot of guys last year, in fairness. Um, but yeah, we actually just don't really use rookies that much. Um, and I don't hate that. I, I don't hate having them just in meetings, in on the sidelines, you know, learning the game. It doesn't really bother me. Um, I do think it's a little bit weird that Blake is behind Ronnie. But again, like I said, if the coaches are seeing, like if the coaches are making that decision, they're not trying to, they're not trying to put out a worse possible team when there's a better option available to them. They're always going to try to put out the best, the best forty-eight each week, and 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 split those those reps and uh, that snap count. They're they're the reason it's split the way it is is because these coaches know these players better than we do. I realize it's not the answer you wanted there. <laughs> to probably most of these questions so far, it's not been the answer you guys have wanted. Uh, we're doing our best. We're doing our best. Um, but yeah, I would say Blake will probably be later in the year. Get him a little bit more uh, acclimated and stuff. Uh, next view here coming from Edwin. Emphasis on the win. Number one, do you think the Bears defense can stop Stafford's air attack? The Bears got two picks against the Colts, but they gave up a lot of yards on the ground. I can see this being a big Kyron game. I absolutely see this being a big Kyron game. I think running backs in general will will have a good day for the, for the Rams in this one. Um, but Bears defense, I mean, yeah, they're one and two and stuff like that. But like this Bears defense is a really good unit. And to sleep on them in any capacity, I think, would be just irresponsible in uh, in a sense, you know, as anybody playing the game. We can sleep on whoever we want. It doesn't matter. We don't impact the game. But um, when, when like, they, like, like you had mentioned, two picks against the Colts, um, played an interesting game against uh, the Houston Texans and won week one on their defense. They're like, Caleb Williams did not do much in week one and they won that game. And a big part of that was their defense. So is Stafford a guy who can wiggle his way around that? Yeah. But at the same time, you just heard it from Rishi that like they were never scared of Stafford. Maybe that was because he was on bad teams. But at the same time, uh, I think Matthew Stafford is definitely the best quarterback that they will have played all year. So it's a good litmus test for them as well. Number two from Edwin, how many sacks does our defense get against the Bears? Probably like a thousand, give or take. Um, But I do feel good about this week. I'm going to say five. Number three, if the Rams go after Devontae Adams or Amari Cooper, which would you prefer? And would that prove they're all in this season? Um, I would prefer Devontae Adams. And would that prove that they're all in the season? I think we're still all in this season already. Uh, We're one and two. There's no reason to not be all in on this season. Like there's, I don't think there's anybody in the Rams world that's kind of like, well, we better, we'll probably be okay, but it's uh, not, this is not our year. You know, I don't think that's happening right now. So um, I like Devonte a lot. I think Devonte Adams is incredible. Um, it's, uh, yeah, to to have to add him to this roster, I think would be sick. But I also don't think that the Rams would make a move like this. I mean, how sick would it be to have Cooper, Devonte, and Puka? You know, and into this group would be so awesome. But I just don't see that happening at all. Um, but yeah, I don't think that there's any not all in or not not all in. Does that make sense uh, for for this season at this point? One and two. Uh, but again, I just like I think that that would be a weird dynamic to try to add in another big name wide receiver into this offense. I think it could happen. I don't think anybody would be upset. I don't think Puka would be like Devonte is going to be taking my reps now. Like I don't think we're going to see anything like that. Uh, but I also would be very shocked if that happened. Next one here coming from Cody. I'm going to be at the game. Uh, do you expect this game to come down to the wire? First of all, sick, dude. Send pictures. That's absolutely awesome. Have an awesome time as well, man. Uh, whether win or lose, man, going to games is, uh, that's where it's at, man. We're football fans. We love this stuff. The atmosphere, the vibe. I think it's so, so cool. So, uh, dude, go have an awesome time. Uh, I do think that this game comes down to the wire. We're still a beat-up team. We're riding pretty high. It's it's so funny to to, like, to feel the vibe of Rams fans as a whole. And I don't have any targets here. I don't have any like people I'm trying to mess with or anything or kind of reference or anything. But like going into week three, the vibe was like, we are done. It doesn't matter why I even play these games, dude. We're not going to win anything. We'll probably never win another game uh, in our lives. And then you go into this week and it's like, we beat the Niners, dude. We're unstoppable. We're going to beat up everybody. And it's like, well, we're still injured. (laughs) Like we're still losing a lot of guys. Like, so I do think it'll come down to the wire. Should be a, a fun game, defensive game. I feel like the over-under being at 40 and a half, I'm hitting under, I think, this week, dude. I think I am. Uh, let's see. Uh, favorite key matchup uh, for our defensive defense pass rushers against the struggling Bears offensive line. Um, 
something that Rishi had mentioned in our conversation was that the Bears offensive line is susceptible to stunts. And that's what I'm hoping for. I think this is where we see Braden kind of come around and loop around the edge as Jared comes in and eats a couple of those blocks. We've seen that happen a few times already. And I think Braden's going to get home a few times in this game. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's my favorite. That 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 left side, I think, is uh, the left side of the offensive line, right side of our line, uh, I think is 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 what to watch in this one. But then at the same time, dude, um, Byron and Kobe are always available to go off. So uh, I think that the Rams have a good matchup here when it comes to to rushing the passer. Creativity from Giff Smith uh, with some some stunts and all that stuff, I think is going to be huge for this one. Next one here from Cody. Uh, does Byron Young break out for three plus sacks this game? Who's your prediction uh, for player of the game? I don't love giving predictions on player of the game and stuff like that. Uh, I will. But I also don't know, dude. <laughs> it's just a shot in the dark. I have no like insight or anything like that. Um, but uh, does Byron Young have a breakout three three plus sacks in this game? I'm gonna say he gets two. Um, and then my prediction for player of the game, I'm gonna give it to Kyron. Um, it just feels like a day that Kyron can have a good day. You know, it's a good day to have a good day to beat Kyron Williams and score touchdowns against the Chicago Bears. Heading over to the YouTube channel here. We got a mix of uh, Payo Time and Rams House, who seem to be the only ones that, that ask me questions on YouTube. That's okay, though. Uh, let's see here. Will Whittington, this is from Rams House, will Whittington be able to begin to take a larger role, perhaps as the number one stats-wise? Or do you see Atwell continuing his trajectory? Uh, thought, to, uh, thought Atwell was very key last week, but could see Whittington pop with more ops given to him. It seems like D-Rob is taking a lot of the attention away from the other guys so that they can eat. And yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's kind of one of my comments on D-Rob from last week was it like, hey, he's just doing he's just doing his job. And that is in turn helping out the other guys quite a bit. So so that's obviously awesome. But as far as uh, Whittington being number one stats guy, I, I again, I think it's going to stick with um, I, I think my, my my thought process is still very much the same in Demarcus Robinson, Tyler Johnson and Tutu Atwell are the guys and uh, uh, Colby Parkinson at tight end. But we're really leaning heavy on on the, the backs right now. Uh, my thought process really hasn't changed. Tutu had a good game. Whittington, I think, is awesome. But right now, I think my mindset's kind of, I don't want to say locked in, because my my opinions and thoughts are always fluid. As I get more information, I'm always willing to uh, to consider that. But I, I, I think I'm pretty locked in until the bye week of what we're going to kind of see from this offense. Probably 12 personnel this week, you know, a lot of that stuff. So we will see a lot of Colby and stuff like that. So wide receivers, I'm just not sure, explode. Um, in these next two games. Next one here from Rams House. What would it be like sharing a room with Tutu Atwell? Dude, he probably just like, he would probably just talk so much trash about how I trashed him. <laughs> It'd be all awkward. Like something small would happen. He'd be like, oh, maybe it's just because I'm a bust, huh? Because I suck. <laughs> And you'd be like, dude, that was a long time ago. Okay, get over it, dude. I, I changed my mind. I'm wearing your jersey right now. Like, you know, it'd be like one of those. Uh, next one here from Rams House. How many sacks do you see us getting this week, uh, given the opportunity we're, the opponent we're facing? You see three to four, but Williams is quite slippery. You're absolutely right there. Uh, that's a good point, actually. Um, I've said five. I'm going to stick to five. But um, we've seen this team have trouble bringing down guys like Kyler um, last week as well um, against, uh, uh, against what's his face? Uh, Brock. Brock Purdy. I don't know why I forgot Brock Purdy's name, but... Uh, so, yeah, we obviously, um, Williams being a, a guy who can move around as well, obviously something that we're kind of keeping our eyes on uh, for this one, but I'm going to stick with five. I think that five feels feels good, and I think that it'll be because, not because of one-on-one -on -one defeating and stuff like that. It'll be just stunts and confusion. I think that that'll be kind of our ticket for this one. Next one here from Rams House. Uh, you can make the Rams wear any of their throwback uniforms in their history for the next game. Which set did you choose? I think it's a pretty easy one, dude. I'm going blue and white, man. I never got to see those uh, myself. Uh, never. I, obviously, we had like the the version of blue and white for a couple years in in LA as the return. Uh, once we got McVeigh, but um, 
but yeah, that 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 throwback old school blue and white would be just so sick to see. I would not dare go back as far to go red and black. All right, uh, to, to the Cleveland Rams days, but um, but that that blue and blue and white man honoring some uh, some Deacon and Merlin and, and and Rosie and Lamar, dude. I like honoring those guys a little bit in your way um, to to kind of just showcase uh, those those old school uniforms that we haven't seen in quite a while. Uh, but to see the white horn was really cool um uh for those couple of years and stuff but um but i also feel like every color that's not yellow is cursed so maybe maybe not <laughs> on the uh, next one here coming from payo time the chefs at sofi ask your opinion on a game day snack named after a current rams player what kind of snack do you pick and what player do you include oh man i'm gonna have to think about this one i i i need time to pun this one out i'm gonna actually um i'm gonna save this one uh for next week i got you next week on this one man um so let's see um let's uh ram's house i understand it's only going to take time for our fractured fan base to grow strong again that makes sense to me but am i the only one deeply yearning for a strong home field advantage like an atmosphere that teams have to really prepare for uh when building when building SoFi, one of the reasons they said they put the field 100 feet into the ground was to trap some of the noise and make it louder. Would love to see that place rocking at full force with truly invested fans. Again, I know it'll be some time, uh, but definitely looking forward to the days when it become when we have a true 12th man. Um, I'm not sure we'll ever see it to what you're describing. Um, we're Los Angeles. We're a hub. We are a place that has a lot of other people from a lot of other places. And I, I think that ultimately we'll see a strong fan base in, in Los Angeles. And we're kind of seeing it build up right now. But, um, as far as like what you're describing to get an atmosphere, like a KC or a Seattle or a Denver or other places, you know, that's, I, I, I don't think that the Rams are ever in that conversation. I just don't. Um, we're Los Angeles. Could have built it in St. Louis, I think. Um, you could you you could build a team there strong enough to get a, a really strong fan base that really makes that that dome rock and stuff. Uh, but it, so far, it again, I being in Los Angeles, being a place where there's so many people from so many other different places, they're not all Rams fans, and that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And uh, we we will have our strong fan base, but also. Let's not forget we're competing with an entire other team in our own city. And yeah, I realize Los Angeles is massive. There's so many people there that we could easily fill up our stadiums and have our own strong fan bases individually. But ultimately, I think that a lot of the fans from a lot of people that I know, in fairness, kind of rock with both teams right now. And so it's never really going to happen. It, I don't want to say never, but I would be shocked if at any point in the the Rams time in Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium that it's like this home field advantage is just unstoppable. I just, I just don't know if that's, that's in the cards for us, man. I really just don't. I feel like I'm so negative today. What is up with this dude? Okay. I've got two more questions here from coming from payo time and we're about to cheer this up. Okay. I feel like I've been blown off questions. I've been rude <laughs> and maybe I haven't been, but I just feel it's been a long day. Okay. No excuses. We're going to make these last two very fun. These last two are coming from payo time. What are your thoughts on Byron Young and Kobe Turner through three games of their second season? I feel like many Rams fans are giving Verse and Fisk uh, the attention as rookies this season. And I have been really encouraged by their games this year so far. Dude, you are absolutely right. I think that a lot of attention is going to Verse and Fisk and a lot of people are forgetting about the Young and Turner combination that we had coming in last year. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that uh, Byron and Kobe are doing an awesome job. And kind of already being tasked with being veterans, even just the the fact that they're they're just now hitting what 20 22 games, you know, uh, in the NFL. Like that's crazy, man. But uh yeah, you're absolutely right. But I think what's cool about that is we got that combo, the 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 young and Turner combo, followed by the verse and and fist combo to where all four of them now get to kind of grow together. Because when we're talking year eight and nine, you know, uh, for, for these guys respectively, like no one's going to be talking about, it's like, well, these guys are ahead. Like, it's like, well, they're all deep into their careers. They're good, man. So uh, I'm excited. And I hope that um, this combination 
not only sticks around, but just continues to grow together, continues to push each other and uh, just kind of shows off a little bit about um, about this. The, the, the Just flexing Les Sneed's draft acumen a little bit is pretty fun stuff. Uh, next one here. Situation. You're at work. Your coworker says that they would like to start getting into football. They love that, dude. Yes. Uh, knowing you're a hardcore Rams fan, they think you could be a good person to ask. Absolutely a good person to ask. 1,000%. Do you invite them to watch a game with you? Do you force your Rams beliefs on them? Are there any teams you would go out of your way to protect them from becoming fans of? Yes. Uh, we'll get to that one in a second here. So, um, those of, so, okay. So, coworker wants to start getting into football. Love that. Love when anybody wants to get into football. And in fact, I was one of the only weirdos out here saying that I don't hate the Taylor Swift stuff with uh, the NFL. In fact, I've got a niece who is 10 years old and loves Taylor Swift. And guess who kind of cares about football a little bit now, dude? I love that stuff, man. I'm a big fan of it, actually. And I hate the stories where people are like, oh, I saw this this chick come in and said uh, she had a, a like 87 glitter shirt on. And I started asking her questions and she got sad and left. It's like, you're a weirdo. <laughs> Why would you do that to a little girl, man? Who are you? Um, what kind of monster are you? But uh, I, I'm all here for it. And I, I made it very known uh, to, uh, to, to as many people as I possibly could. And it's like, if you are only here watching the NFL because of Taylor Swift and you've got questions, come to me. I will answer them. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to talk trash to you and say like, oh, you don't know anything or you're brand new here. We're getting out of here. So we all had to start somewhere, dude. All right. And without Madden 2002 on my Nintendo 64, I probably don't know nearly as much about football and the NFL rules and stuff like that. So you got to start somewhere. And I don't care how you find the sport. I think I love this sport so much that I don't care how you find it. If you can find a way to get excited about it and get interested in it, I've got your back and I'm all here for it. Your next question here was uh, knowing that I'm a hardcore Rams fan. Uh, it's like, do you, do you invite the, them to watch the game with you? Maybe. Depending on the coworker, depending on the situation, depending on them, uh, our relationship and stuff like that. But like when I'm watching the Rams game, I don't care about that. Like it's awesome to have my squad, high fives, we get some chats and stuff like that going. But like I'm going to be as intense about the Rams game no matter who I'm with. So... Sometimes I've had like ex-girlfriends and stuff like that be like, I'm not going to come with you anymore. And it's like, fine, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, I might invite them. It kind of depends on the situation. I would actually prefer to invite them on a like a Thursday night or a Monday night game that the Rams not playing in and just be and just pop in and be like, hey, let's have some beers. Let's just hang out. If something happens, you don't understand. Let me know. I'll explain it to you kind of thing. Uh, do you force your Rams beliefs on them? Absolutely not. Um, if I got beliefs forced on me, I'd be a Broncos fan right now. So got to share that love a little bit, man. Got to spread it out and, and show that support for, uh, for whatever they would, they would go for, um, and kind of just give them the vibe of each team, dude. Cause each team, let's not, you know, mistake it here. Each team really does have its own vibe. As far as the fan base goes, as far as the team goes, are you a historic team? Are you a newer team? that's kind of flashy and stuff like that. Like the Rams, I'm thinking like literally Packers and Rams, like, I was thinking like, are you a historic team that like will not change your uniforms, will not change your your stadium, even the name of it because it's so historic and stuff like that? Or do you go in with the Rams? Where you're like, you know what? We're going to go a little bit flashy on our uniforms. We're going to put a logo out that we've never even come close to putting out and doing an L.A. logo. SoFi Stadium, make that thing beautiful, man. And just kind of a whole like, you know forward thinking modern team as opposed to one of the old school teams. So I would kind of explain that and kind of uh, share the benefits of all of that. Um, and then, uh, are there any teams you'd go out of your way to protect them from becoming fans of, uh, Eagles, Cowboys, uh, Raiders, Broncos, and then Jags. Um, the first bunch are because, uh, the fan bases are, are generally pretty toxic and it's like, Hey, don't, don't get involved into the wrong crowd. There's good groupings in all those fan bases for sure. I know great fans in all of those fan bases for sure. Um, and Jags, I would just caution because like, Hey, you don't want to, you, you don't, you don't need to do that to yourself. You don't have to choose to be sad forever. All right. You don't have to do that. That's our fan quesos. Pay a great one to end on, man. I'm glad that that one ended up being last. And I will get back to your other question next week uh, because I got to think of some puns, dude. And I'm probably going to try to think of as many as I can. So I can't do it off the cuff right now. My brain is, my brain's mashed potatoes. You ever seen that? Uh, like I'm not on drugs right now. 
But according to previous commercials that we've seen in the past, they would think that my brain's on drugs. Scrambled eggs in here, dude, right now. Um, it's been <laughs> That's it. The scrambled, the scrambled eggs right now. They're all tired and stuff. Uh, but <laughs> we got the Rams playing the Chicago Bears this weekend, dude. That'll fire you up. That'll get you going, man. Get you all happy and excited and stuff. Get you up in the morning. It's going to be an awesome time on Sunday, of course, as an early kickoff. Don't forget, early kickoff. Adam Amin and Mark Sanchez, we are becoming very well acquainted with them calling our games, so we get them again. At Sheriff Joe Bags at Ram Showcase, that's where you can follow on socials, ramshowcase.com. Thank you again so much to Rishi Barron for hopping in and chatting with me. Be sure to ho- follow him on Twitter, uh, at Rishi Barron. The spellings and stuff will be there, so uh, definitely uh, be sure to give a follow to an incredible Bears fan, an incredible guy for sure. Um, but that is going to do for me. I am Sheriff Joe Beggs. This has been Ram Showcase on Sports War Radio and the Fan Sided Network. For those of you who aren't Rams fans, our thoughts and prayers are with you. For those of you who are Rams fans, thank you so much for watching and go Rams. Rams.